Boeing builds a Milestone 787. But will they ever build an airliner again? We're looking at a picture of a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Why is this significant? Well, it's the 787th Dreamliner, and it will be in service with China Southern Airlines, the first Chinese airline to operate Boeing's latest jet. But this isn't about the 787 cracking the Chinese market, or about how the 787 is changing many airlines' route structures with very long, low-cost, non-stop flights. Now, I'm talking about the manufacturing, the way Boeing builds commercial airplanes. Perhaps assembled is the better word for it, because unlike Boeing airliners of the past, the 787 is built up from very large and complex sub-assemblies sourced from a global network of Tier 1 aerospace suppliers. And it's been a big project. The Japanese government, for example, supported 787 development with a $2 billion loan, and Japanese companies co-design and build a full third of the aircraft. Now, we're not talking about avionics, internal systems, or software alone. Outside suppliers built entire fuselage sections and wings. Now, to haul these large parts, Boeing modified four old 747s into what they call dream lifters, allowing Boeing to essentially fit airplanes inside airplanes like Russian dolls. Now, traditionally, Boeing built airplanes the same way they had since the 1940s. Lots of aluminum sheet, forging, stampings, and castings held together with about 50,000 or so fasteners. The idea of the 787 was not only to outsource production of major assemblies, but to make the airplane out of composite materials, making it stronger, lighter, and especially for Boeing's airline customers, on 20% more fuel efficient. Now, the design worked, and when combined with advanced GE and Rolls-Royce turbofan engines, sales, in a word, took off. What didn't take off was Boeing's profitability on the project. Now, during the initial production run, Boeing lost as much as $35 million in airplane, which is considerable even by aerospace standards. But the program accounting method that Boeing uses sort of smears that cost over a long production run, so it's possible to be profitable on a per-unit basis over the long run. But as costs increase, that run gets longer. Now, one result of all this confusion are business press headlines like this. And this. And this. And this. So is the 787 a winner or not? Well, the Dreamliner is really a giant two-part ongoing experiment for Boeing. Part one was to determine the feasibility of a large airliner made almost entirely from composite materials. Now, the answer to that question is clearly yes. Now, the other part is the experiment around massive outsourcing of the production of a large and complex engineering product, so much so that the airframe maker does little more than final assembly and testing. The results of that experiment are a little less clear. Now, low oil prices don't help when you're selling on economy, and Boeing's own Evergreen 737 program as well as advanced Airbus aircraft are a factor. Now, in the end, I have no doubt the program will be very profitable well before the end of the production run of the Dash 8 and Dash 9 models, especially as the hot-selling Dash 10 variant ramps up. But was it all worth it? Could Boeing have made more money by keeping more of the production in-house? Could the development delays have been reduced, quality issues avoided, costs lowered? I think the answer may come when Boeing finally announces the company's next major airliner project, the new mid-size airliner that fits between the company's venerable 737 and the Dreamliner. Now, the press are calling it the 797, although you won't find a mention of that on Boeing's website. And composite construction will be used the same as the 787. Now, will Boeing take on more of the airframe production in-house? Or have they worked the bugs out of the Dreamliner's global supply chain? Can they compress the time to first flight enough to hold back Airbus Challengers? Now, the new jet will tell us a lot about the outcome of the 787 production experiment. Now, don't worry about Boeing. Over the last five years, they've built just under 5,000 aircraft and satellites, increased production 10 times, and repurchased $28 billion in shares. But if you're down on the weeds, a Tier 2 or Tier 3 supplier, you've just got to be curious. Will Boeing ever make an airplane again, or just assemble them?